الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد Inshallah Ta'ala with our weekly session on learning Quran word to word as we mentioned before and we keep reiterating the point the way to connect to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is after belief in it to recite it with proper makharid, proper tajweed and then contemplating on it, trying to learn and understanding it. And actual way to connect with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through knowing the grammar and morphology, sarf and nahu, but many other things related to the Arabic language. That's a tedious process and not for everyone. It takes a lot of time, good four to five years of extensive study to master the subject. For common people, it is easy, inshallah, and easier to just know word to a translation of the words of Quran. And that way, you can get so much repetition, and inshallah, over the course of, say, 10 years or so, you'll be able to understand the gist or the idea behind it. And remember, other than 500, roughly 500 ayat thereabout, deal with fiqh which need a lot of elaboration and detailed explanation from ulama and fuqaha leave those aside about six and six thousand uh, ayat of quran are such but we just talk to you directly you do not need any scholarly explanation for that you can just go the, through the meaning and inshallah you can find yourself connected to the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's our goal inshallah so, okay so we've done 10 ayat of quran the turn out of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. So as we mentioned before, the theme is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after giving us the idea of seeking guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the whole book. And that is the book that is guidance for you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained three types of attitudes. There will be people who would hear the message and they would accept it. These are called believers. There are people who would listen to the message and understand it and reject it. And there'll be a third group where they listen to it, understand it, try to believe in it, and then reject it. So internally, they are confused. They're double-minded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give two similes, two examples of that group how there are two different attitudes within that group of people we call hypocrites. That they do not believe, and there's some who are categorically a non-believer, yet they proclaim their iman outwardly. They're two-faced. But there's another group which is confused. They're sometimes when you see the benefit, they try to accept it. And then when there is any tribulation, any trouble, they just back off. So they are in between the two situations. But anyway, so we have moved on to the group of people who are called hypocrites. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about them by the A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ When it is the word and either when and when qila qila is passive form when it is said when it is said la for them when it is said to them when it is said to them la not do not tufsidu cause corruption do not cause corruption fi in Al Arab in the earth. So do not cause corruption in the earth. When it is said to them, <clears throat> don't confuse people. If you don't believe, just reject it outwardly or accept. But don't confuse people, don't corrupt. Seeing people 
and confusing them, say, oh, actually, we are believer, but actually found there was a problem, so we left. So having two phase confusing people, don't do that. So when it is said to them, do not cause corruption in the earth, so what do they do? قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ So they said, indeed, we are not but the reformers. We are trying to solve the problem. We are helping people out. A very clear attitude. Sure. When they reject the truth, they try to confuse people. Said to them, what are you doing? Rather than apologizing, rather than regretting, they would come up with an excuse. Oh no, actually we're doing it. And then try to circumvent people around it. Try to come up with some, you know, baseless explanation of their wrongdoing to justify it. And remember that attitude could still be found. But, remember, although this is a specific group of people, yet even within the community, our community, we will, we will see people coming up with those attitude. As remember last week, we mentioned about 30 different attributes which are found in hypocrites. They might not have rejected the truth, but these are the signs of hypocrites. So we shouldn't be practicing any of that. And if there was any doubt about that, rectify the affair. So don't come up with excuse. If you have been identified by someone that you've wronged something, you've done something wrong, don't come up with, oh, actually, no. Accept that. I just give you a quick example on this. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, you could imagine the level. Someone came to him and started criticizing him, saying, that, what have you done? What's happening? This and that. And you haven't done this, 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 this. All the wrong charges against him. And he's Khalifa. He heard it all patiently. When he finished, he said, let's make dua. Oh Allah, if what you said is right, forgive me. And if what you said is wrong, may Allah forgive you. Amazing, isn't it? He did not say that, don't charge me with that. I am fine. Ask that many people. This is what I have done. He didn't start showing his good deeds that he has done. And he has done amazing amount of work. Yet when someone is there to correct you, they are there to help you, even if their idea is malicious, even if they're trying to cause you trouble, you are getting benefit from it. So, Pay attention to that. Maybe this is quite higher level, but at least when you are really in the wrong and someone corrects you, do not try to justify that. Step back. Many a time we justify for our ego, face saving. How dare you say that to me? <laughs> to yourself, you have got that many problems. Why are you telling me of, you know, I don't do this and then you don't get him off for that thing. You do yourself this much. All this is because we are so egotistic. We need to be a bit careful about that because this is a sign of hypocrisy. So when it is said, in, now one thing you would remember, either when it comes in Quran, it is attached to a past form, yet it would mean future. So that's why word to word translation, although we would say in our word to word translation, they said, but the actual meaning is, Whenever it is said to them, don't do this, they will do that. Or they or say, don't have to translate in the past form. The words are used in the past form, but when either is used, either tend to mean something in present or in future, mudari, we call it. Okay. So that is why the translation, they say we are but reformers rather than they said that they are reformers, okay? This is just a nuanced language, which, which happens in every language anyway. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a comment about what they just said. Beware. I said, be aware, all you believers. 
إن indeed هم they are هم المفسدون they themselves are مفسدون corruptors for want of a better word those who corrupt those who cause corruption and و لكن but or you can just say while لا يشعرون they do not understand لا do not يشعرون they understand they do not even have a clue about that they haven't got the شعور of that they're clueless they don't perceive it they're causing corruption and justifying it and don't even have a clear insight into it وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ و and إذا when and when قيل same thing it is said to them لا for or to whom them when it is said to them this is the next attitude آمِنُوا Believe, you all believe. Ka like, ma aman nas ma as like, what others the way people believed amana believed and nas people believe as these people other Muslims they have believed they have become Muslim. You believe likewise, have a true faith in Allah. So ka like ma as. Aman al nas people believed. Aman believed al nas people. So believe as the people believed means have a true faith, not internally rejecting and outwardly showing your faith because you're causing corruption. So Allah is exposing them, removing the layers of the fake faith. 46 one. كما آمن السفهاء So they said uh, Shall we? نؤمن Shall we believe? Like ما as what relative pronoun as آمن believe As-sufaha is the plural of safi. Safi is foolish, mad, someone who is stupid. It's the plural of that. So as the stupid people, foolish people believe, shall we believe because they are foolish people who believe in the Billah. So this is what happens when you have got corruption in your mind. You do corruption outwardly as well, but you see it as goodness. And you don't even have the idea about that. And when you see others, you look down, down upon them. Like them, these poor people, these Muslims, we're not going to believe like that. We have got better faith. So this is how they would try to justify their wrong action. So they said, Anu'minu. Shall we believe? Kama amana sufa? Like the foolish people believed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Disclose their problem again by saying, "Ala in the sufaha." Ala in the humu So be aware, Ala. Be aware. No, in indeed, whom them humul again to whom. So in Nahum, indeed, they, they themselves, that's emphasis, they are themselves, as are foolish people. Wa and, lakin, but, la, do not, li'alamun, they know. So they do not know. They do not know that they are themselves the foolish ones, and they're charging others of that. Them. They themselves. 
Who? Them. Who, who is them, sir? Who is them? Same. same. They, who means them? But it, when it comes twice, obviously you have to translate in your language to fit that context, which is emphasis. They, they are. It doesn't make sense if you say, indeed, they, they are. They themselves are the foolish ones. That causes the emphasis. So emphasis in every language is done in a different way. So in Arabic, it is with, by repetition of the same word. But in other language, it is not like that. Okay. Lakin, is it one word? La. Lakin. Lakin is one word, yeah. One yeah, yeah. Lakin is your Urdu lakin. You use lakin in Urdu? Yeah. So lakin is the same thing as lakin, which is actually Arabic lakin. We have taken that in Urdu. So lakin or lakin, same thing. But. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا And إِذَا when When I say that you will ask for you, you have done When they meet, is possible, so when they met. So the literal meaning is met. But as I said, when Ida is being used, the past form actually means a something in mudari, something in present or future. When it is when they, when they laqu, when they meet, when they met, Alladina, those people, Alladina, those people, Amanu who believed, when they meet those who believed, men Amanu, those who believed, the people who believed. Qalu, they said, Amanna, we believed. So to the believers, they would say, oh, we are believers like yourselves. So that when they come of some criticism in Islam, they would say, the new Muslims would say, ah, if they're saying so, there must be truth in it because they've been Muslim, they said. So they're telling us something from deep down. Perhaps we don't understand. Maybe they're guiding us to the right thing. That's how they cause corruption. That, that is how they confuse people. So when they're with them, the believer, they say, we are with you. So when they meet those who believe, they say, we believe as well. That's what they mean. And end is a when khalaw, khalaw, to be in seclusion in khulwa, khalwa or khulwa. You know the, the word khalwa when you have to be in seclusion. So when they are secluded, when they are alone, when they are khali, away from others in the seclusion, ila towards to shayatin. Shaytan, plural of shaytan, him there, mudaf mudafile. So when they are in seclusion, alone with their shayatin, means they were their accomplices with the disbelievers. When they're with them, qalu, they would say, inna, indeed we, inna, indeed we, ma, with kum, you. We are with you. To the believers, we are with you. To the non-believers, we are with you. Two-faced. Innama nahnu mustahzi'oon. Innama nahnu mustahzi'oon. Indeed, that this is the full, this is the complete sentence. After that, they say, indeed, inna ma nahnu mustahzi'oon. It's called kafa makfufa. The way it, it is understood is, Indeed, we are not, but this is how it is understood. We are not, but so indeed, we are not what we are, what we are only. Yeah, we are only. Nahnu, we are. Indeed, we are only mustahzi'un mockers. We are the, we are only mocking. We are only doing this, is to mock them, these people. Just to 
mock them. Allah says, Allah mocks them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we actually mock them. Allah yastahzi'u, istahza'a yastahzi'u, by istifad. Yastahzi'u, be him with them. Allah is mocking with them. Obviously, don't use with in English when you use, you use mock. Remember, every word or every language has their own way of construction. So you don't say mock with them in English, maybe, although you can say, but normally we mock them. You do not need a preposition after that generally. If you use it, that's okay. But that doesn't matter. There could be some words in Arabic where you need a, you know, a preposition to it. And in English, you don't. In another language, you do not. But that's the language itself. So it's nothing as a as a problem. Sometimes you don't even translate those extra words or letters here. Yeah? <laughs> well, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mocks them. And yamuddu. Madda yamuddu means to extend, give them respite, prolongs them. Keep giving them chance to carry on. Give them a bit of lose, snooze. Let them carry on. Let them carry on in their slumber. Rasir dhili kar dete. Yamuddu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let them carry on. Go as far as you want. Hum, them. Allah prolongs them. Fi in tughyan. Tughyan means in their rebellion in their transgression, in their questioning and challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are doing that. They're going beyond limit. Allah said, okay, carry on. Allah leave them. Give them enough time to carry on. Hum tughyanihim means in their, in their transgression, Allah leave them, prolongs them. Ya'mahun amaha. Amaha is the root letter. Amaya ya'mahun. Amiya to be blind with your eyes. Amaha, to be blind with your mind, with your intellect. Ya'mahoon. So they are just blinded in their intellect. They're just wandering around aimlessly, not knowing which way they're going. So physically they could see, but spiritually or intellectually, they cannot understand anything. They're blinded internally, intellectually. So they're continuing with their transgression, thinking that we are on the right. Carry on, carry on. So these are the people. These are them. They, they. Alladina, these are those. These are those. These are the people. Ishtarau. Ishtarau means to buy. So they bought misguidance. They bought misguidance be in exchange of al-huda guidance. They bought means they sold their guidance and they got misguidance. They're happy with this deal. So ishtarau, and then when this wow needs to be connected to the dad, which is mushaddad, the first dad is silent, sakina, so you have to combine together, you do dhamma, ishtara wuddalalata, okay. Ishtara wuddalalata bilhuda, so the ishtarau, they bought <laughs> misguidance in exchange of guidance. فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ فَ so ما would not رَبِحَتْ رَبِحَ يَرْبَحُ when you do a business and you get profit 
So when you get a good profit, it's called rabiha. And tijara is mu'annas, feminine word, so rabihat. Rabiha, rabiha, rabihu, rabihat. So this is feminine form. So, so their tijara to whom, their tijara, their trade, their business did not benefit them. فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُهُمْ Their business, فَمَا So, not رَبِحَتْ Benefit, a profit. تِجَارَتُ Business, whom, them. So, their business, their trade did not benefit them. Wa and ma not kanu they were muhtadin guided. Neither their business benefit them and nor were they guided. So if they had any benefit in this dunya, would have been good. And they're misguided on top of that, they're really going on the wrong track. It is only going to cause them a big problem in the life hereafter. مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا So مَثَلُهُمْ مَثَلُ مَثَلْ Example. Darabi مَثَلْ We use this in Urdu as well. So مَثَلْ مَثَلْ is example. Whom of them? Their example is like the example of Mathal, again, like the example of Alladina, those people, istawqada, waqada, yaqidu. So, yaqidu, waqada, yaqidu. So, that, wakudu hannar, you know, wakudu hannaru, wakudu hannasu wal hijara. Wakud is a plural of waqad. So this is the, you know, the ammunition that you put, it's like coal that you put in fire for the fire to ignite and get continuously burning so the fuel. of the, the fuel it's a fuel so the fuel of that so what is the, so they so take the fuel means they seek fuel means they seek light they, they, they seek to lit or burn a fire so their example is Allah says like the example of those people who is who lit naran a fire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I mentioned, is going to give us two similes. Just extend it to explain the two types of hypocrites. Who are they? So the first category, those in whom disbelief had taken deep roots. So they had little inclination towards Islam, but they pretend to be Muslim for their worldly benefits, either to confuse others or to get some war booty, some benefit, be the you know, citizen of Islamic State as a Muslim, get some stipend, don't have to pay any tax. The Holy Quran compares them to the men who having found light again loses it and is left in darkness. That's the first group. And the second type of hypocrites are those who did recognize the truth of Islam. And sometimes they wish to be genuine Muslims, but worldly interests would not allow them to do so. And they remain in a perpetual state of hesitation and doubt. They are doing this. They're confused. La ilaha ula wa la ilaha ula. Now, neither are they there or not are they there. They've been likened to the man who, uh, who is caught in a thunderstorm, who move forward a step or two, and when there is a flash of light, but when it is over, he's stuck again. So he would not find a clear answer because he's still double minded. He's not decided yet about the faith that he wanted to be, but then this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained. So the first simile is. As Allah says, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْ قَدَنَارًا The one, the example is, the first one, first category is that the example is like the example of those who have lit a light. Now some scholars will say the person himself created a light. He just ignited a light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that light away. When it was all clear to him, he could see the light. 
it was just taken away from him. The love of Jalala, Lamb of Allah, is pronounced with full mouth. So when it is preceded by a fatha or dhamma letter, zabar or page letter, ذهب الله ذهب الله بنورهم ذهب الله okay, not ذهب الله ذهب الله okay, like that. So when فلما so when أضاءت he illuminated means the fire illuminated. Mark, that means not as material. Mark is five types, and one is the other one. But this is a lamma. So there are different types of lamma. Ma is muka bito, and the other one is the masmuk. Ma nafia, ma mausula, ma masdaria, ma zaida, ma istifhamia. Okay. Falamma adaat ma hawlahu. So when this fire illuminated ma, what was haul around him, what was around him. Ma haul, this is Urdu mein bolte It's actually ma haul. Ma mausula and haul. But we use it ma haul. Ma haul is it? Surrounding. Ma haul. Islamic ma haul. <laughs> so they, they use that, which is fine. Ma haul means what is surrounding them. So when this fire ignited the surrounding, ma hawlahu, zahaba, went. Zahaba means third person, went. But when zahaba is used with a ba after that, then it becomes, he took. It changes the meaning. Zahaba changes its meaning from he went to he took. So if you say, zahaba bil kitab, he took the book. As opposed to he went with a book. Okay. It is so Zahaba Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say Zahaba Allah would mean Allah went. But B coming afterwards, B means Allah took. So Allah took. What? Noor. Noorihim, their noor, noor of them means their light. So Allah took their light. So they ignited that light. That was the light of Iman. They should have accepted it. Since they didn't pay attention to that, they did not accept it properly. They did not want to accept it. When they could see the light very clearly, Allah took it away. Since you are not interested, you're not worthy of giving this light anymore. This is the first category. So, ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Allah took away their light. Wa and taraka. وَتَرَكَهُمْ وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ And Taraka left, abandoned, whom, them, so Allah abandoned them, Allah left them, in, fi, in, ظُلُمَات, ظُلُمَات is plural of ظُلْمَة, ظُلْمَة is darkness. Darkness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the light and then left them, abandoned them in the darkness. La yubsirun, do not see. Say they do not see. It's all dark now. Now they are completely in darkness and they can't see the light. So Allah has given them this opportunity to accept the faith. They wanted to, they proclaimed it, they showed it to people, but in their heart they were not convinced at all. They opted to dodge and confuse people, the hypocrites. And obviously, they're not going to get benefit. So they continued to be on that path, and Allah took the light away, and now their misguidance is seen as guidance for them. They feel that they're on the right path. الذين ظل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا الله says 
قل هل ننبئكم بالاخسرين اعمال او محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم shall i not tell you about those who are the worst of the losers the bankrupts those who got the biggest ever debt alladhina dalla sa'ihum fi alhayati ad-dunya those whose activities all their efforts were lost in this world wa hum yahsabun while they were thinking and having clear conviction annahum yuhsinuna sun'a they're doing very good they're doing fantastic they just thumbs up for everything they think this is them thinking in the eyes of allah they're just lost completely that's what happened they have this light they saw it they believed in it but then rejected it despite knowing as i said these are attitudes obviously alhamdulillah we do not have hypocrites these days perhaps not in because it's not very appealing to be muslim anyway from material world unless someone was to corrupt it and cause trouble there could be few like that but majority wouldn't do that so the when you get the light but we have the attitude is still remaining the certain people who still have those problems are arrogance are thinking big about ourselves would bar us from seeing through the problems and we do not want to get any advice from anyone because we are all muftis on our own why should we ask anyone and if anyone corrects you he is your enemy now if he corrects your children he is the biggest enemy you're going to find 24s in their children and put it on media media and spread it to everyone how dare he finds fault in my kid and then they regret afterward because then that kid is going to continue on the wrong path it's if amazing how scholars of the past would say when someone tells you a mistake <laughs> subhanallah the likes of imam shaabi and imam abu hanifa they would say if someone tells me about my mistake even if it is wrong i take heed maybe he is right maybe he will become right maybe i'm going to do that. so let me just get one way ahead so that's why they would never be upset about someone correcting them in fact they would take it very seriously he is a well wisher at least he's trying to help me even if his intention is not to correct me for a good reason rather to make me feel bad so what who am i allah knows very clearly i can't shy away from allah i can't hide it from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if someone is telling you that you are bad accept it if you are really bad at least he told you the truth and if he lied so at least it will humble you down then not everyone think that you are the pious person out there you are the only one think that you are the best <laughs> no one else consider that you are worthy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that control your nafs that give you a big blow to the nafs keep it like that it is it is quite beneficial to have someone around you and i tell people that fear the day and it is going to come very close very soon very soon when you would not find people correcting you. and very soon you would realize the loss it is we don't see it as yet because it is very very hard breaking for people for someone to tell them off especially in public subhanallah you would regret when you won't find anyone correcting and very slowly we are moving on that direction direction looks like this going to be a norm in future so one last ayat inshallah taala summum bukmun umya fahum la yarji'un summum bukmun umya so although you see summun with tanween two pesh bukmun two pesh umyun two pesh but all three dhammatan would be pronounced differently the first meem is with ikhfa shafawi this is or not ikhfa shafawi this is iqlab noon becomes meem here the second one is ivhar okay so second one is because of huruf halq ain third one is ikhfa so that is why there is difference summum bukmun umyun fahum la yarji'un summum 
بلائن says so whom they la not yarji'un return so they have lost their path they've gone away they knew they saw the light they accepted it then rejected it so Allah took the light away and now they are completely in darkness they could have returned back there was a way when you take wrong exit to come back to the track they could have done that but for that you need four good good things you should be able to see that i'm lost if you can't see how would you come back maybe you could hear someone shout please come back here 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 you're deaf as well so you can't even hear someone telling you to come back to the track and it may be that you could shout out Please let me know if I'm on the right track. Am I lost? Please guide me. But I'm dumb. So you can't even ask for help. And there's only one fourth thing left, which was to cling on to someone. Take someone as your mentor, as your leader, as your teacher, as your guide, to hold on to that person. So you take me wherever you go. This person hasn't got even that much intellect. So if you're lost, what do you do? Just get connected to someone who is going that way. There was this, this small story about two ants. They were talking to each other. One said, my only wish is to die in Makkah. I want to see Kaaba. I've heard people go there and I keep listening to their stories. I never get a chance. But others say, how would you ever be able to go there? It's just so far away. You are in here and... As they were talking, there a couple of pigeons just landed there, close by, and they started talking. How are you doing? I'm fine. Where are you going up to? Oh, my journey is to Makkah. Like, you know, subhanallah. They just heard. So the other ant started moving whichever way for his chores or whatever. The ant who wanted to come to Makkah, he crawled and came and clung onto the poles. You know, the what you call close of this bird. Because he heard that this is going somewhere. I haven't got idea to go there. Since he said it, all I need to do is to just hold on to this flow of this animal. But wherever it's gonna go, I will be there. And he landed in Kaaba. So a sensible person could do that as well. But they didn't have even that. Because they were not intelligent enough. So deaf, dumb, and blind, can't see it, and yet. They are still having an opportunity to be on the right path, but they opted for not doing that. Again, this is not just them. Hypocrites do it. We see these characters all around us. We all see these things among ourselves. In certain situations, we behave like that. We want to see it, but we don't. We could have done that, we don't. Because my ego, my inner self, my worldly benefit would stop me and bar me from doing that. So these characteristics of hypocrites are there to be for the end of time. And the more you contemplate on that, you see, subhanAllah, we've been there. We all make certain silly mistakes about a sin that we all know shouldn't be done. But we do it and we just blind ourselves knowingly. Those are all the attributes of hypocrisy. We shouldn't be falling prey. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of Quran categorized that, clarified that three types of attitude you would see and people would do that. Be just a believer. Don't be a hypocrite and don't be a disbeliever. And inshallah ta'ala you'll be guided. That is the bare minimum level of iman and taqwa we should have and continue to improve. So may Allah give us tawfiq. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina fa astaghfiruh. Second simile we will cover next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.